this tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. This, by the way, is a quite a nice program. It's, I think, freeware. Virtual Dub. You can import sequences of images and render them out as AVI videos, which will become very large, but you can later reduce the file size by converting them or whatever. Uh, but this is off topic. Um, I want to ask you something about this creature here. What is wrong with his walk? So he does walk quite all right, but he slides. Now this foot slides. Both feet slide now. This foot slides. This foot slides now. So he's like on, um, like walking on ice, which of course is not what we want. In real time, this video looks like this. Let's change the frame rate here uh, to 24 so this is not intact and I'll show you what I did and then I'll show you how to do it properly so this is the scene what I did I uh, imported that character and the character has he sits here in the outliner and when you um, hold the shift key and in order to open the whole section you can for example go to walk front and you see keyframes every frame so that's a typical thing for motion capturing uh, the character has keyframes for all the joints really but not for its skin that's the skin it's the skin is uh, just a member of the is it's controlled by the motion but uh, the top node here for the joints is the walk to in this case walk to reference and that reference has only a few keyframes and these keyframes were made by me so let's delete all these keyframes by going to edit delete by type and channels so they're all deleted now and now he walks properly but only forward everything's fine now but I want him to walk around the corner I'll introduce a new, new character now to show you things from scratch so we'll delete him which is the skin here and the reference so he just goes away all we have is the ground plane two lights which don't have to do anything with this tutorial really and now we introduce a character so we go to Windows, General Editors, Content Browser. And here we have Animation. And under Animation we have the Motion Capture Data. And these things, I wonder why I don't see the icons currently, it doesn't matter. Uh, we have the Walk To, that's what, you, what we just saw. Or for a change use the Walk Number 1. Double click it and close this window. So where is the character now? Well it is there it's so huge because we didn't uh, change the dimensions of our grid the grid is in centimeters now and should be in meters but that doesn't matter because we just pick him and we pick the reference here and scale him down and now when we press F or A we see him arrive in the scene and I think the dimensions are quite good already like this. The locator of the top node here has no keyframes and it's me not meant to be keyed actually. It should sit there forever while the whole animation is working. See the locator is still here and when he finishes his walk after 
317 frames as I can just can see the locator still here uh, the locator's purpose is basically in order to position him at a certain starting point for example if we go back to the very beginning and we want him to start over over there in the corner and don't walk this way just more or less diagonally we would just start with this so the locator will always sit here that little green dot and uh, the character now does his walk as before but he walks diagonally which is just fine we'll undo this to get a clear start from here so don't animate this you can change the pivot there and move it to the to the foot then you get uh, a problem when you rotate it uh, and you need to uh, animate the other foot you have to move the pivot forget all what I just said we'll do it properly how do we do it properly we need the walk reference that that's a top node in most cases when you build your own skeleton this would be the hip I think the hip joint um, we pick the hip joint that's important and now we go from modeling or wherever you are to animation and under animation you find the key menu and at almost at the bottom is redirect and that's exactly what we need we want to redirect our creature in order to make him move into another direction so let's go to a position now where he where we want him to turn uh, and if you have a close look at uh, or try it out yourself when you turn around the corner what you do is basically you have a planted foot which you rotate so here for example this foot is planted is the tip could rotate around this axis here so we add frame 60 69 in my case and we want to turn the character right here so that's what redirect is good for key and redirect the option box is not totally necessary but I switched from the default rotation and translation to rotation only because we don't need to translate him we just want to rotate him so he walks around the corner um, rotation and translation would be is good if he walks up a hill or downstairs so we apply this and we apply it to the top skeleton node Now you have an offset rotate control one here in the outliner and where does it sit it sits there that's the object which will make our character turn without sliding so we press the key w in order to place this properly to the foot to the tip of the foot we can go to the side view here move it forward and this perspective is that good yeah I think it's good too there's a good position and we recheck it right here maybe just a little bit further back because it doesn't rotate on the toes but slightly behind that and now we set at the key 69 a keyframe by pressing S for this locator S that means the character does the same thing as before but right here he touches <laughs> our little turntable <clears throat> so let's see when the rotation is finished or we want it to be finished right here I guess when the foot leaves the ground and this foot is planted now we rotate our locator around here we would typically not do it that dramatically because usually the rotations take place um, not in one step that's almost 90 degrees now but just for the purpose of showing demonstrating this and we're at frame 75 now just uh, a few frames later uh, that's a fast turn I guess so we press S again and what happens now he comes here and now the his right foot which is the front foot now steps into the locator stays there and now rotates isn't that cool 
and he keeps walking in the same way. So this is really turning the tip of his foot and nothing else. It's not a problem for this foot because the foot is in the air anyway. And now you can do the same thing with the other foot. When the other foot is the foot which you want to rotate. That one in this case. Let's try it out. The foot is planted. This one is in the air. And now it's time for rotation for this foot here. We need to pick the top reference here, which is the walk reference. Don't pick that locator. It doesn't have to do anything with a new locator. So key, redirect, and here is the new locator. And we need to set him to the tip of this foot. And now I press the key S again. It's a new locator. And I step a few frames forward until that foot leaves the ground this frame is good or maybe one earlier whatever and now you can rotate him like this set another keyframe right here at frame 139 in my case and now he comes walking and he rotates and he walks on like this So in a more realistic animation, you would make him turn a little bit in this situation and turn a little bit more in this situation and start the left turn from his perspective right here so that he doesn't have to turn that far right here. <laughs> but I think this is quite fun and redirect is so cool. I think it took me years until I found this out. It makes the walking process in all kinds of directions really nice. By the way, this is a rendering with low anti-aliasing settings. And at the beginning of the animation, you see the color of the uh, character, the this kind of blue thing, bleed into that area here now because, uh, because of anti-aliasing. And he's very close to the uh, light here. So uh, lots of blue uh, lands on the surface here. This effect is not trivial at all because um, it has to do with the rendering time. And uh, about 20 years ago in the early 2000s, the uh, effect was called radiosity, the influence of objects like this blue character on the surface, uh, whereas in, before, you would have just had the character uh, cast a shadow, a grey shadow. And here's this, the same thing with orange in a better rendering. Quite amazing. Uh, it would have cost a day or so for rendering in the early two, in the year two, 2000, I guess, in this quality. And uh, it takes a second now. Have a nice day. Bye bye.